Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. Hope you're doing well. And today I am taking a first look and sharing my first impressions of Pixelmator Pro. I first heard of Pixelmator years ago, honestly, but never paid much attention to it. Recently, it sort of came back around into my field of view and I decided, you know what, what the heck, I'm gonna pick up Pixelmator Pro, take a look at it, see what it's all about. To clarify, it is a Mac only app. It is available via the Mac App Store. I'll put a link to the website down below where you can check out and learn more about this product. Not an affiliate link, I'm not affiliated with them in any way, just trying to make it convenient for you if you wanna take a look at it. But this first impression video, to be clear, is a first impression. I'm going to cover some highlights, some of the features, but I'm not deep diving. It's not a full tutorial. And the way I do first impression videos is I play with the tool for a little while and then come share some thoughts about it. In other words, I haven't mastered the product at all. I haven't learned a lot of the nuances, but it's super powerful. And if you're someone who wants some advanced capabilities like, like layers and masking and things like that, but you don't want to use Adobe, hello, like me, um, or you just want some really powerful editing tools that give you some alternatives to things that perhaps may be on offer from Adobe. Also me, hello, this might be the tool for you. So let's take a look at it. Here's the interface. I've got a photo that I'll play around with here in a minute. Again, not a full editing job, not a full tutorial, but the interface is very, I think, intuitive. The cool thing is you can go up here to preferences and if you go into workspace, you actually have the ability to change it. And that's one of the cool things about Pixelmator Pro is it's not just for editing photos. As you can see, it's got design elements, illustration and painting elements as well. I'm in the photography workspace because of course I'm a photographer and that's what I like to do. But I wanted to point out that you have a lot of cool tools in here that allow you to do other things. That's why I think of this as a product that would replace Photoshop in your workflow as opposed to a more traditional photo editor. Some of the cool features are that you do have layers. So you can click over here and show layers. You can see that I'm on just the standard basic layer, which is a raw file. So it does support various raw file formats. I'm gonna go ahead and hide layers and I won't be getting into layers. I'm still kind of playing around with it. As I said, I haven't got my arms completely around how layers and masking work. I'm working on it. I may come back and do more tutorials, but this product is really cool. It has a lot of capability. From a photography point of view, you have a lot of tools over here, which I will touch on. You've got some presets. You've also got some various effects you can get into. By the way, you can customize the look here by clicking on customize. You can see you've also got sepia and channel mixer, which I could add here if I wanted to with one click and just add those to the tool list that is displayed here. On the right hand side, you've got additional tools, what I would maybe traditionally call canvas tools. This would be masking and selections, erasing, things like that. So if you want to erase or repair, you can click on that. You can come over here and say, Jim, there's a horrible spot in your photo. There is, and now it's gone. So you have that quick and easy ability to just remove things like unwanted spots. Actually, I might just go back and remove a couple of other things. Maybe you don't like the look of that there. Maybe that spot's boring or something in the way. I've taken those out as well. I'm gonna go back up here. If you look and click on this, it says color adjustments. I think of this as your editing pane or your develop panel if you use Lightroom or other tools that have your basic photo editing tools. They're on this tab, which is for some reason called color or color adjustments, but I think of it as your develop pane. You've also got effects if you click down here and I'll get into those here in a minute. There's a lot of them, it's really cool. Um, as I also mentioned, you've got repair tools, you've got various gradient fills, color fills, Again, I don't have time to cover all that in one video. The other thing too is you have a text tool. Some people like to add text to their images. In fact, you might wanna add a shape and a text. You can come in here and say plus, and you can go into shape, and let's say you wanna add, if I can highlight it, a rounded rectangle. You can come in here, adjust the look of that, and maybe with the tool, just come put that in the sky, and maybe you like that. Maybe you wanna put some text on top of it. Just click text, click on your photo, and your text will show up, and maybe I just wanna call this Amsterdam because it is. There you go. Now I wanna move it, I'm gonna highlight that and just come over here. You've got lots of opportunities to change fonts, all that kind of stuff. Again, not a full tutorial. I'm not gonna get into all that. In fact, I'm gonna delete that and show you some of the editing tools that you can use to edit your images. So I'm going back over here. You do have a histogram if you wanna display that. I don't. You have white balance, hue and saturation, lots of other things. Actually, before I get into that, let me show you these presets because there's some nice ones here. I'm gonna start with this landscape and I'm just gonna click on one of these and see what it looks like. You know, not bad, a little bit too dark, but the photo is really dark to start with. Again, easily fixable with all the tools. 
you will notice as you choose a preset that it opens up the various tools that are available or, or part of that preset. So you can do that. And if you want, you can always hit reset and you can close these tools if you want to. And I'm going to go ahead and do that. So again, I won't go through all these various presets. There's a lot of them. There's also machine learning or AI built into this tool. If you click on ML Enhance, it will do what it thinks needs to be done to the photo. Too bright for me, but the cool thing is it's opened up the lightness tool, which is kind of like your basic light tool, like in Luminar, for example. We have shadows and highlights, but I'm going to take brightness down. It's too much. I'm going to pull the highlights back a little bit, maybe add a little bit of contrast, maybe pull up the shadows just a ton. I'm just kind of playing around here, but I used ML Enhance as a starting point and then made some further adjustments. Uh, I can come in here with saturation and vibrance if I want to, to pump up some of those colors, which I like in the sunset. Maybe I want to go a little bit less warm and a little bit more of that tint to give it a little bit more of that magenta cast because it was a sunset. So that's not looking bad. You know, it's probably not exactly what I would do. But one of the things I wanted to show you was this color balance tool. Super powerful. You have basically two options. You have the master, which you can just say, I want more saturation, and I'm going to drag that towards the warmer colors, which I think looks pretty cool. But if I reset that, I can go to this three-way color. And as you see here, I can get into just the highlights and do the similar things, but in fact, just the highlights. And this will increase the brightness or decrease the brightness, like, like the luminance value of the color that you're putting in the highlights. So you've got a lot of power here to customize that. I think that's pretty cool and very powerful. You've also got what they call selective color. It's basically an HSL tool. So you can come in here and pick a color. Say I take the blues and maybe I want a little bit less saturation of the blues. Maybe the reds, I want a little bit more saturation. Maybe the oranges, I want a little bit more as well because it's a sunset and I'm kind of bumping that up a little bit. Not a bad look. Again, probably not exactly what I would do, but that's okay. As you notice, there's ML on all these tools as well. And there's a reset button. If you decide that you don't like what you've done, you can hit reset and start that tool over. Coming down here, and I won't go through all of these, but I'm going to take a look at levels, which is really powerful and I think cool. It basically allows you with the histogram that's displayed here to adjust the tones in the image. So as you can see here, I'm taking some of these mid-tones and I can drag them left or right to impact the image. Here's kind of the center. And basically it's allowing me to impact contrast in various parts of the image which I think is really useful and really powerful. And I'm just kind of playing around. I haven't really experimented a whole lot with this image, but I'm just mostly showing you what you can do. But if I turn this uh, levels tool off, there it is before. And then when I turn it back on, there it is it after that slight adjustment, but it's very powerful. And I could do a lot more if I took the time to do it in this video. There's also a curves tool, which you may have seen me demonstrate in other videos, not about Pixelmator, but just in videos in general. I will come back and talk about that in more depth in future videos. There's a cool replace color feature, which I think is a lot of fun. You can come in here and you can say, you know what? I don't really like that yellowy green jacket. And you can see as you hover here, the outer circle is kind of changing color and that's the color you wanna select. So I've now selected that color. And let's say I wanna replace that with some red. In other words, I want to make his jacket red. I just did that and it took me, I don't know, three seconds or something. Um, I think that's pretty cool. You can expand the range of that if you want to. And of course the intensity. So if it's too bright, you can pull that down a little bit. And maybe I just wanted it to be a little bit more orange jacket versus that kind of uh, greenish yellow fuchsia kind of color. So if you look at the before and after with replaced color, there it is before and there it is after. Quick, easy, super powerful. More things you can do here. As I said, there also is a before and after button here, so I can hold this down. You can see where we started, and you can see where we are. Much better looking photo. There's a few other things I wanna show you, including down here, if you click on sharpen, you can come in and sharpen. And this is basically an individual mask for you to brush in sharpness to the photo. So I'm gonna go strength 100, brush size, pretty big. I'm just gonna do something right in here, just to paint a little bit and show you what it does. So let me zoom in to about 200 just so you can have an idea. And I'm just trying to sharpen right here. Again, not a tutorial on, on how best to do this, but if you hold down this button here, and if you look at just that area, you can see there's the before and there's the after, much crisper, much sharper. So that allows you to selectively apply sharpening. I'm gonna hit reset and get rid of that. While we're at it, you've also got the one below it, which is soften. So I can do the same thing. Maybe I wanna come over here and soften up this sky and you can see how it's basically blurring out. It's a great way to soften up areas of an image. So once again, if I hold that down before and after, 
These tools allow you to selectively sharpen or soften parts of the image. Again, I'm going to reset so that I don't do that. I'll also go back to fit to screen. And the next thing I wanted to show you is saturation. You have a saturation brush here. Same thing. Just allows you to come in and selectively paint in saturation. So let's say I wanted to make the sky a little more saturated, but nothing else. I just did that. So once again, if I hold down before and after, there's the sky before and there it is after. And below that, of course, you have a desaturate option, which allows you to remove that saturation with the brush. So again, these are basically masking tools that allow you to selectively apply sharpening or softening or saturation or desaturation. And of course, they also have a lighten and darken. So let's say I wanted to come in and lighten, and I'm going to leave this at a fairly high strength. So you can just come in here and just lighten up certain areas of the photo if you wanted to do that. It doesn't really look particularly good here, but I'm just showing you how it works. So I could come in and lighten this part of the photo. And the before and after, as you can see, is very visible. There's before and there's after. Again, not exactly how I would edit the photo, but you can do the same thing with darken. Maybe you wanted to come over here and darken some of this so that you don't draw the viewer's attention to that left side of the frame. You can do that. Maybe you just want them to be looking at the boat and down the canal here in Amsterdam. And so maybe what you want to do is darken that left frame. Maybe you want to brighten some of the distance like I just did and maybe change the color of the guy, brighten the sunset and more saturate it, that sort of thing. But you can see the darken on that left hand side is there and after there it is what it looks like. The only other thing I want to talk to you about is the effects panel. There's a lot here. It's really cool. There's I mean, I could do countless videos just on some of these tools, but let's say you want to go into some of these different effects. This uh, photographic one has light leaks and has different things like that. You can see how that's applied. Again, as you click on, these are presets to be clear. Um, you can click on these presets and as you can see, the tools that are used in each preset populate down below. Now I'm going to hit reset. You can also just, instead of going into these presets, you can just click on effect and you can see you've got a full effect menu. So you've got blur, you've got distortion, you've got color adjustments, you've got all kinds of things. You've got a tilt shift option if you want. And they've got these really cool things here. These, uh, I think they call them a rope. Yeah, effect rope. And so this effect rope allows you to move it around the image and change the shape and the size in order to get different effects applied in the image. This is a little bit of a tilt shift effect. You can move the center of the focal area down here, you know, again, lots of different things, but you can do massive blurs, you know, a smoother, uh, tighter transition, that sort of thing, maybe less blur. Very interesting stuff. I'm going to hit reset, not what I want to do to this photo, but I wanted to point out that this effects panel has so many options and so many possibilities. And that's why I think of this tool, Pixelmator Pro in general, as being something that you would use instead of Photoshop. It also, with a lot of these tools, allows you to do stuff that you might would otherwise do in an app like, let's say, Topaz Studio. And of course, it's got powerful photo editing capabilities that you might find in other apps like Lightroom, for example. So there's a lot of power. There's a lot of control you can have in your image. And more than anything, there's a lot of fun things you can do. So I will probably come back and do more videos exploring some of these features. But this was my first impression video of Pixelmator Pro. And in a word, I would say my first impression is, wow. It's cool, it's fun, it's powerful. Again, it's in the Mac App Store, Mac only. I'll put a link to their site down below. I'm trying to learn more about this product. I'm experimenting and having fun. If you would like to see more videos about Pixelmator Pro, let me know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching, my friends. I hope you guys are doing really well. Have fun editing. I'll see you soon, and adios.